So this past weekend, I tried Dorian Yates blood and guts back workout. It's a high intensity training workout from the uh, blood and guts DVD or video that I found on YouTube. And let me tell you, it was tough. So what are my thoughts on it? So this video has a couple of exercises from that workout. I didn't upload all the exercises because frankly, some of them recorded just like garbage. Um, but here's a couple of exercises from it and I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. So first of all, the day after this workout, I was incredibly fatigued, sore, run down. And the second day after that workout, it was even worse. Okay. So a couple of reasons for this one, I think the volume was too high for me. Okay. So the amount of volume an individual can tolerate, adapt to, and recover from is going to vary between individuals. This is why you don't want to just blindly follow a workout program. So I just followed exactly what he was doing. And for me, the volume was too high. Okay. For other people it might be fine for Dorian. It was fine. But again, when you have the assistance of, you know, growth hormone and, you know, large amounts of anabolics, your tolerance and recovery is going to be greatly enhanced. So it was way too much for me. And I was overtrained worse than I had been in years. Okay. So that's my first thought about it. Second thought is a good workout, super intense. The thing I didn't like so much is that I tried to perform the reps similar to the way he did them. Pretty slow controlled negative, you know, two, three, four second negative, but a more, I wouldn't say explosive, but definitely a faster concentric phase than I'm used to. While it's still hard, I just, I don't like it as much. Okay. So my thoughts are, first of all, if you're doing a faster concentric, it's going to be just as effective for the most part. But it seemed, you know, at the end of the, the first pullover exercise, actually like a muscle on my neck started to cramp. And this is the problem with doing kind of fast concentrics and using momentum is you're going to recruit other muscle groups that aren't necessarily involved in that movement to help produce momentum. And this is where it can kind of like pull a muscle, get a cramp, or in worst case, produce an injury. That's why I always recommend a, a more, a very controlled change in direction. But with this workout, I did it similar to the way he did it. And I didn't really control the change in direction as much as I usually would. <sighs> Not my favorite. I prefer to do it my way. Slower, concentric, slower, change in direction. Just overall, a little more control, a little slower. Um, another thing I noticed is that, you know, in this workout, he had, you know, a couple exercises per muscle group and, you know, generally several sets per muscle group because you include the warm-up set. So for instance, on the pullover, you know, you're doing one or two warm-up sets and then a working set to failure. For the pull down in the row, warm-up set, one or two warm-up sets, working set to failure. Now I think if you control the exercise a little bit more, and you deliberately contract against the resistance rather than more or less lifting the weight, which is kind of like done in this workout. I don't think you would need additional exercises for the muscle groups. And I don't think you would need the warm up sets. So I think if you just did the change in direction a little more slowly, um, which is probably going to require you to use a little less weight. With this workout, I had to use a lot more weight than I usually use because, you know, you're doing it more quickly. I think it would remove the necessity for the warm-up sets and the additional exercises, you know. Personally, I would never do a pull-down and a pull-over in the same workout. And I wouldn't do a, you know, there's a single-arm row and then a bent-over row. You know, there's two rows in the workout. I think maybe, you know, I'm just speculating here, maybe he found that it was more effective, maybe because of the way he was doing the exercises, but whatever, it worked for him. 
So that's a couple things I would change. I would just, you know, slow the movement down more, and then it's probably going to remove the need for those additional warm-up sets and uh, the additional exercises. Because after doing, you know, two rows, pull over, pull down, reverse delt fly, deadlift, low back extension, that was the entire workout, I was beyond fried. It was, it was definitely too much for me. And um, I think for a lot of experienced trainees, if you do this with, you know, super high intensity, it's probably going to be a, a little bit too much. So, you know, my general thoughts, effective workout, probably not as safe as it could be with the uh, speed of movement on the positive. Generally, probably too much volume for a lot of individuals. Okay. And again, this is why you want to adjust your workout based on your individual ability to recover and adapt. Simply following what some bodybuilder does that works for them, their recovery ability, their tolerance for volume. It's kind of like going into a store and just taking a suit directly off of a mannequin because it looks good on the mannequin and then assuming it's going to fit you the same way it fits the mannequin without taking into consideration your body type, you know, your waist size, your suit size, etc. It's a very similar analogy. So I don't recommend just blindly following bodybuilder workouts and I recommend adjusting your workout based on what works for you. So here's some of the exercises from that workout. It was still a good workout. It beat the crap out of me for several days after. Even today, I think this is day, this is day three. I'm still a little low energy and sore. Soreness, probably because using more weight than usual, creating more damage, more sets than usual, more repetitions than usual, creating more damage. And of course, I was doing different exercises. If you do different exercises, you're generally going to produce soreness. So that's why I was experiencing what I was experiencing. So if you want to try the exercises in this workout, I'm going to put a link in the description to the video of his blood and guts back workout. But... Here it is, me giving it a shot. I think there's about three exercises that I actually did get to record well. And um, you can see what it's like. So one warm up set to start. Story Needs does two warm up sets, so. That's what we're starting with. And I'm also going to do the reps similar to how Dorian does them, which is kind of fast. He goes a little bit quicker on the positive, slow on the negative. So I'm going to kind of replicate his tempo. Sometimes when it's humid, the weight plates will stick together, and then they drop, so that's what that noise is. Okay. So a little bit heavier warm-up, and then we'll do the working set. Make sure the seatbelt is tight. I'm really trying to replicate how he does reps, which kind of does it like this. Pause, easy on the way up. Drive down, pause, easy on the way up. That's how he does it. Let's see, so I'm going to have to go heavier than I usually do because there is going to be momentum. Do a lot of weight Get towards the bottom here. Ooh, warm ups are, warm -ups are done. 
this is the working set. So you start with two warm-ups, and then you go working set to failure. Here we go. Oh. Ugh. Oh, Ooh, damn. It's so tough when you do it quick. Oh, the only thing I didn't like is doing it quick like that. I actually got kind of a cramp in my neck because I'm just like Ew. trying to swing it forward. And then when you kind of use momentum, you start to recruit other relatively uninvolved muscle groups to try to get the momentum. Start to cramp my neck up. Well, that's how we did it. All right, that's the first exercise. Going right to pull down. Ooh. So one pull down warm up set. I don't have a hammer strike to pull down, so this is what I'm using. I'm trying to just again copy how he does them. It's one warm up and one work. Ugh. See, the thing is, it's not that it's not. It's still really fucking hard if you do fast reps. It still is. You know, it's a little more risky on your joints. But the way Dorian trained, far less risky on your joints. Than the rest of the bodybuilders. You know, he had a torn biceps and triceps, but it's likely for training too hard in a, in a calorie deficit before the show. It's probably why that happened. But compared to the other bodybuilders, even though it's fast by today's standards, it's still pretty good. All right, this is working set to failure. Ooh. Ooh. Next one here, it's gonna be reverse dumbbell flies. One set, failure. Ugh. <sighs> 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 
fuck. Ugh. He's dead. Tough workout. Not the way I do it personally, but it's tough. Ready. Johnny. It's tough. I don't think deadlifts are appropriate for this workout. Contrary to popular belief, or misinformed belief, the deadlifts are mostly a lower body exercise. It's a hip extension exercise. Just because your back is involved in holding and stabilizing the weight, I don't believe it makes it a back exercise. Is it a lower back exercise? Sure. But it's really, uh, the lower back is the kind of the secondary muscle group work. The primary muscle group is really the glutes and the hamstrings. So I don't think it has any place in a back workout. But I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking and trembling. That was a killer workout. I'll put the link to the video. Blood and Guts video below, just try it. Yeah.